Hey everyone, so what you see before you probably looks just like your typical endless runner environment playing. But what would you do if I was to tell you that what you're seeing does not involve the camera moving and does not involve the environment moving? Even though it looks like you're traveling through a trench, neither the camera nor the environment is moving. So how is this possible? This is possible through texture scrolling. So basically we have a sprite and the sprite is scrolling in place. However, since the same sprites are, replayed, uh, are repeated vertically and horizontally, it looks like they're scrolling downward. So at any given point, you have a, a sprite. It's scrolling in place, but because the sprite behind, uh, next to it or below it is the same, it looks like it's scrolling into it, creating the illusion of movement. So... That's how this has been attained. I'm going to spend the next few minutes showing you how to do this. So why is this a big deal? Why would you bother other than it being really, really nifty? Reason for that is because of performance. Normally, if you have the camera moving or you have the environment moving towards the camera, you have to constantly instantiate new objects and then have those objects be deleted once they get behind the camera. So you have all kinds of issues with garbage collection and uh, memory management as far as memory being properly reserved and released. And so you could potentially have a memory leak. So this is substantially, at least potentially, substantially improving performance because you're saving all those transactions, all those uh, instantiations and deletions. Now, if you have an, an obstacle like a crate or a subway train like in subway surfers, that would still have to be instantiated. That would still have to move towards the camera, and then it would either be deleted or repositioned, one or the other. But for the basic animation of the environment, that's it. There's no GM script. There, there's no, again, you were not instantiating and deleting over and over again. So... How was this attained? There's a couple ways you can do this. You could use an offset for the texture, and I'm going to do a separate video how to do that. This one, I use the own one sprite shader, which is a package on the Unity Store. I've reviewed it in the past. I wanted to show you another example of what can be done with it. I think it's a great value, but that's your decision whether or not you feel it is. So if you are not interested in seeing how to do this with the sprite shader, then feel free to skip this video, and the next one should come out in a couple days. So for everyone who's staying, this is actually pretty straightforward. So first of all, here are the three images. That's the ground, that's the wall, and obviously that's the grass. For each one of these, when you import a 2D image into a 3D project, typically the texture type is default. You just need to change that to sprite, okay? Second, wrap mode needs to be repeat, not clamp. If you do clamp, these will all just stretch in place and it'll quickly distort and look wrong. You want it to repeat, you want it to cycle, okay? And then you just click on apply and that will, and you do that for all three of these or however many that you're using, okay? Next, you then drag and drop one of them into the scene. And then what we do is typically uh, the um, lanes could be made out of multiple objects. I made the lane and all the rows out of just one object. So this is it right here. All I did was take the sprite, drag it into the scene, and it made this. What I did is I changed draw mode which usually defaults to simple, I change it to tile. And at that point, you can say, what's the width? So that gives us our three lanes. And what's the height? That gives us our depth. So that gives us our, our, our columns, and that gives us our rows. And the only thing that actually involves the all-in-one sprite shader is, so you would click on Add Component, All-in-One Sprite Shader, and then you get this you expand out here and what you choose is texture scroll you change it to speed x axis zero speed y axis i chose one it looks a little slow so you might want to do two three whatever works for your game okay and that's it for this so this entire object the entire area that you run on is one sprite that's it and just it's scrolling from top to bottom. Okay, so now what we do 
is the walls are very similar, except it's rotated vertically. I also had to make a few other tweaks, like the speed you notice is only half, it's only 0.5. That's because this image was exactly twice the size of this image. And so I only had to have it go half speed. So that's the kind of math you have to do on your own. It worked out nice and clean for me. So this isn't like something absolute. This is something you'll have to do based on what you're using. And then the grass is very similar to the ground that it is um, draw mode is tiled. I made it 48 width, and that's partly because as you go out into the distance, you can see more out here. So you want to make it wide enough so it offsets that. Height 58, uh, 56, excuse me, so it's the same depth. And that's about it. So the entire environment that you're going to see for most of the game is one, two, three, four, five objects. So again, I've yet to do the math about this, but I can't imagine this not being more efficient um, and less resource intensive than some of the other things that I've done. Because basically your 3D environment is just a handful of tiled sprites and the uh, texture is being scrolled to make it look like there's actual movement. Now, uh, I already mentioned that obviously you need to have objects instantiate, so you still have to deal with those. And clearly using this method, you really can't have like a hole appear. That would be an issue. But the other issue is that this might get repetitive seeing this all over again, even with other objects, you know, spawning on top of this. So there's no great way that I can think of to do a transition. So you kind of have to cheat. You'd probably have like, say, a... Um, a tunnel, when you go over the tunnel, the whole screen goes black. And then at that point, you could use that moment of blackness to swap out the texture. That's an entirely different tutorial, um, but you could do something like that. So you pass through the tunnel, and then when you come out of the tunnel, you could then be using something other than this grass. It could be whatever that you're trying to do. So I think that's about it. I hope that this was useful to you. Again, I very often don't talk about optimization, so I really wanted to bring this to your attention and that you can make an incredibly simple 3D environment. Um, the only thing this doesn't have, you don't have your player moving left to right, and you don't have the camera following your player moving left to right. That's easy enough to do. But the fact that just your overall environment is is um, handled that easily, not a single line of code. I think that this is a great way for um, some for some new player uh, for some new developers uh, to create a um, a, a really uh, efficient um, and stable endless runner game. So, anyways, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider liking the video. Uh, if you want to see more like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Only about 5% of views come from people who are subscribed. And please do enjoy the rest of your day.